blockchain and digital per- and, and cryptocurrencies and it's bullshit. The cryptocurrencies are all going to disappear. They're going to go to zero. Central bank digital currency is a different thing, but it's not based on blockchain. Now, looking forward here, it does seem interesting because when we do look at uh, the precious metals, I mean, it seems like we're in an environment that is, it, it couldn't be better for precious metals. It seems like a stagflationary environment. So we have a weakened economy and inflation at the same time. So like you're saying, it does seem like we should be turning around sometime soon. Now, it does seem like what we're seeing right now is, well, largely what you uh, predicted with respect to the stock market uh, at the beginning of the year that we have been seeing a sell-off in the stock market and it possibly is going to turn into a crash here. We're also seeing a sell-off in the metals. I wanted to get your perspective on that, why you think people are also selling the metals as we're seeing a downturn in the stock market. Uh, that That is a good question. The answer is quite simple. When the margin clerk calls, what do you sell? Anything that you can. Thank you. You knew the answer. You didn't need me to answer it. Uh, and strange enough, if you look at the costs and if you look at the sentiment indicators on both gold and silver, it certainly appears as if we're near a, a very major bottom. I, I predicted that 10 days ago, and, and I think I think we're there. Okay. Uh, you could see some explosive moves in gold shares and gold and silver very shortly, but it's all connected. I mean, gold and silver didn't go down. What happened is the margin clerks called and said, okay, you know, you need to meet a $10 million margin call in the last five minutes or we're going to sell all your positions. The guy said, okay, sell all my positions. And that does seem like that's typical when we do see a market market downturn. However, I've heard that this time around, we're actually seeing more strength in the precious metals this time than we did, for example, in, in 2020 or 2008. Uh, that's true. But the sentiment is, is virtually the same. There, there's a sentiment indicator that I use that sets the sentiment on the, the gold uh, indexes it was as bad now as it was in March of 2020. And I will remind you that I called the, the crash uh, in March 2020 extremely accurately. I had predicted it six months before. I wrote pieces the end of January. It said a bad crash is coming. I wrote pieces the end of February. It said a bad crash is coming. And yes, uh, Silver actually got down to below $12 an ounce. But what did it do in the next six months? It skyrocketed higher to, I believe, well, th- about $30. Exactly right. Uh, the Dow Jones from 1929 to 1932 went down 89%. Between 1932 and 1933, it went from 41 to 108. It advanced 163%. So when you have these catastrophic crashes, you have these extraordinary climbs out of there. I, I think everyone is going to be quite surprised at how high, uh, I, I, I've got a lot of mining stocks that are down 80%, and they're still good stocks. They're just down, but I expect them to more than recover. I, I think it's a great time to be in mining stocks, and it's a great time to have gold and silver. Uh, I, I can't think of anything else. What would you want to be in? Bitcoin, bonds, Tesla. Uh, there's there are so many bad investments right now that it's it's really easy to pick good investments. It is very interesting what you're saying because it seems like we're probably going to continue to see a downturn in the general stock market, but you're looking for a reversal soon in precious metals and the mining shares. Yeah, I don't think we're anywhere near the bottom in the general market. The general market is so overblown, and it's overblown because of all this money that's been poured into the system. And the same thing is true of the cryptocurrencies. Uh, 
you know, there was $3.1 trillion in 10,000 variations of Bitcoin. And everybody said, well, you want to own Bitcoin because it's rare. I, I'm going, you mean there's 10,000 variations of it and it's rare? Yeah, you want in. Well, that was kind of stupid. Uh, Bitcoin and all the derivatives of Bitcoin are, are electronic beanie babies. And everybody's making the same mistake. They're confusing central bank digital currencies to blockchain and digital per- and, and cryptocurrencies and it's bullshit. The cryptocurrencies are all going to disappear. They're going to go to zero. Central bank digital currency is a different thing, but it's not based on blockchain. Now, looking forward here, it does seem interesting because when we do look at uh, the precious metals, I mean, it seems like we're in an environment that is it couldn't be better for precious metals. It seems like a stagflationary environment. So we have a weakened economy and inflation at the same time. So like you're saying, it does seem like we should be turning around sometime soon because the environment couldn't be better for them. Well, it's not necessarily true that we're going to turn around sometime soon. We just know that we're going to turn around. It, it's absolutely true. Uh, um, Mark, Faber, I, I'm not sure if you've ever listened to him speak. Have you? You ever heard him speak? Yes. Uh, he's very funny because he says the same thing every time. In the future, you should give your grandchildren a $10,000 treasury bond so they can put it on the vault. And they can point to it and say, that used to be money. And of course, he's absolutely correct. What would you rather have? Would you rather have a piece of paper with with nothing behind it? Or would you rather have something you can hold in your hand? Let me, let me get something. The French Revolution started in 1789. And the direct cause was the French involvement in the American Revolution that bankrupted Louis Louis XV. What currency did they use in France during the revolution? Oh, that's Signet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, The really strange thing is I've got, I, I live in a little tiny mill house and on the wall, I've got Confederate war bonds. I've got Confederate money. I've got U.S. silver certificates. I've got MPC from Vietnam. I've got assignats. Uh, I, I, I've got 50 different reminders of what used to be currency and is no longer currency. And it is as simple all investors have to do to figure out how profit is. Do they want to hold a piece of paper? Or do they want something real? And the amazing thing about Bitcoin, have you ever held a Bitcoin? You can't. Exactly. Okay. It, it's a theoretical value. I mean, it's with, with, with a, a beanie baby. Okay. At least she had a 79 cent toy that she could hold in your hand with Bitcoin. You've got this, well, you know, somewhere in a ledger. There's something that you put in your wallet and that has value because there's only 10,000 of them because they're so rare. Really? That's like a bad deal to me. And, and the cryptocurrencies have gone from 3.1 trillion to 900 billion. And there have been more money lost in the cryptocurrencies than was lost in 2008 in the subprime crisis. There's a number to knock you over. I think a lot of people maybe struggle with normalcy bias and say, well, you know, this time's different with respect to the U.S. dollar. But if you look at throughout history um, and I mean, cryptocurrency, as you mentioned, if you look throughout history, whenever there's been a currency that hasn't been backed by anything, it collapses. So it's like it seems like the dollar and you know possibly cryptocurrency as well it'll just play out just the same well uh, here's what's beautiful 
Okay. You can go to Amazon and pick one of those up for about 25 bucks. Okay. They're pieces of paper. They're only printed on one side because they needed to use the printer to print more. Uh, some of the things that have happened, we haven't talked about sanctions, so we should at least mention that. 